Ah, uh, shout out to Yusuf. Welcome to MMO Gang. He made around 300 pounds for selling customized PC sets and gaming accessories, which is pretty cool. E-commerce is a way forward, and I've been telling you guys, e-commerce, if you want to make some money online, e-commerce is one way to go for it. So it could be dropshipping or whatever, literally, Amazon, FBA, anything. As you can see here, he's received his 300 pounds from on PayPal for goods and services. Now, if anyone wants to get featured in the next episode, just send me a DM on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. So yeah, man, welcome to MMO Gang, bro. Hey, it's Pokey Banks, baby, and today we're going to talk about more lucrative investments that you can make. So if these aren't your regular, you know, stocks, business, property, all your traditional investments. We're looking at more lucrative investments that will make you a lot more money compared to the stock market. Now, when you think of the word investment, you think of investing into a property or investing into commodities like gold and wheat, or you think of investing into stocks and shares. These investments that we're going to go into are more of your unusual investments that normal people don't really make, and these can make you a killing. Now, if you're new to this channel, I'm Poku Banks. I'm a 19-year-old entrepreneur that goes to university. I like talking about entrepreneurship and personal finance. So in this video, I'm not here to entertain you. My job here is to teach you and educate you. Okay, so now let's just get into it. And now the first investment that you can make with your money is into luxury watches. Now, no, I'm not talking about no Apple Watch, no silly flimsy Apple Watch. I'm talking about Rolexes, Patek Philippe's, Audemars Piguet, you know, the APs. Um, all of these, you know, big boy watches, like the big guys wearing the clubs where they're popping all the champagne and that, you know what I'm saying? You know them watches where they're pulling all the champagne? <laughs> now these watches are starting from around 3,000 to 4,000 pounds that can range all the way up to 100,000 pounds. We're talking big boy watches here. Alright, so for watches, I'm going to focus more on Rolexes. Now for Rolexes, they're pretty much good investments because one, they're build quality, they're very, very good. They are Swiss made watches that are handmade. Secondly, their reliability, so they can keep the time. A watch from 50 years ago, a Rolex watch from 50 years ago, will still keep the same time for today. Finally, for the symbol of success. Now, all of the people that tend to own Rolexes have one thing in common, you know, they've achieved some sort of success in their life. They've either hit certain milestones or they've accumulated a lot of wealth or whatnot. And this is what helps build a Rolex brand. Now, when you think of the phrase luxury watches, the first thing that comes to your mind is Rolex. Now, these are the most famous type of luxury watches that you can find on the market. Now, this is the exact reason why I have a large second hand market for Rolex watches. You know, there's a big supply and demand for these watches. There's two main reasons why there's a big supply and demand for Rolex watches. Number one, Rolex themselves actually increase the retail prices of their watches every year. Number two, they're making limited amount of watches. It's a finite supply of watches. They don't keep making new watches like iPhones. They make a limited amount of watches and then they discontinue them, as in they stop producing them. This makes them more rarer and then builds the price up on the second hand market. So it's high demand, low supply, and limited production. This makes the prices of Rolex go up. Now, there are certain Rolex models that have important history behind them, which is why their prices have gone up. An example is the Rolex Oyster. The reason the Rolex Oyster has a lot of value behind it is because Mercedes Glitz, I don't know how to pronounce her name, sorry, she was an English swimmer. She was the first woman to swim across the English Channel, so from England to France, you know, swim across it in the fastest amount of time. And as she was swimming in the harsh waters, she had the Rolex Oyster on her wrist to keep track of the time. So when she won the swimming race in 1929, she went on to the newspaper to recommend the Rolex Oyster to everyone, as it proved to be waterproof in the swimming conditions and it kept the time accurately. Again, this helped Rolex's brand and it allowed them to charge even higher prices because winners like her were wearing it. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe, man. Let's get me to 10k. Let's get it. Ah, right, of course, if you're interested in investing in watches, First things first, the best watch to start off with is Rolexes because one, they're generally understood and number two, they're the cheapest watch that you can start getting. So it's just easier to get involved. Now a general rule of thumb is to stick to the stainless steel sport model. So this is a Submariner, GMT Master and Explorer. Obviously, keep all the boxes and the papers when getting a watch because this is a help with resale value because you know, collectors like to see all of the fine details to make sure yours is authentic. Obviously, you know, the condition of the watch has to be in decent condition to you know, actually wear and resell again minimal servicing and if you are doing servicing it has to be from an authorized watch dealer not you no know, shabby you no know, dodgy guy that'll do it for cheap in terms of actually buying watches you don't want to buy a brand new one from rolex it's just like buying a car you know when you buy it from a dealership brand new depreciation hits it like a bitch same with rolexes you know because of the retail price for rolexes that includes watch fees taxes all of that so it's just like cars you buy it two to three years old and around two to three years this is where the depreciation starts to settle and then the value of the watch tends to go up by the way, you may be thinking, you know, how the hell does Poker know this? He doesn't resell watches. He has a, he has a, he's the Apple Watch. Yeah, you're completely right. This isn't my knowledge. I've got it from a website that gives you all you need to know about watch investing, watch reselling, which watches to get into, and whatnot. All of that will be linked down below in the description. 
Okay, cool. So if you're not interested in watches, let's get into the next investment that you can look into. And this is fine wine investing, as in, you know, drinking wine. Now, this is an alternative asset which has had good returns over the last 30 years and is proven to beat the financial markets and commodities. The fine wine market has an excellent track record, as you can see here. Ah, cool. So let me give you some reasons to invest into the fine wine market. Ah, firstly, it's less susceptible to market downturns and adverse economic conditions as it does not directly correlate with any of the other financial markets which creates diversification. This means that the fine market can be used to preserve wealth in the events of a recession to protect yourself against inflation or devaluation of the currency. So essentially this basically means that you know if there is a recession this does not mean that your fine wine investments will also go down the same percentage as well as a stock market. You know it may not go down as much or it may not go down at all. It may even increase. The second reason why you should invest is because there's a finite supply and there's a growing demand at the same time. Now essentially, firstly, there's a limited amount of wine produced per year. And then add on to the fact that people are consuming wine every year. You know, people buy wine to drink, but some people buy it to invest. There's not a lot of people that buy it to invest. So therefore, as people are drinking and consuming the wine, and obviously demand will keep generally rising as people want to demand older bottles that have matured as it improves with age. And third and finally, the last reason why you should invest is because with fine wine investments, these are more tangible stocks like real estate, something you can see, something you can physically feel. Unlike stocks and shares, which is all online, it's all paper, it's just, you know, in the cloud. With fan wine, it's actually a bottle that you're investing into. Do you know what I'm saying? Alright, cool. So if anyone's interested in getting started, I'm going to give you some key decisions. Now, again, this isn't from my brain. This is from a source I found called Vinets. Again, I'll link it all down below if you guys are really interested in getting into this. The first step, you just need to simply hold your wine for longer to optimize the performance. Once the wine is bottled, it starts to mature and then this improves as time goes on. So the longer you keep it, the more valuable your wine becomes. Secondly, you need to make sure that your wine is securely stored and insured against any theft or damage. Look, you simply just can't put your wine in your kitchen cupboard for it to mature properly. You need to put it in the right conditions. So this is the right temperature, in the right warehouse, in the right spacing. There's so many things that go into this. Further, you just need to keep in touch with market conditions, the performance of your wine and make sure you time your exit. Okay, so you may be thinking, Poku, so what are the risks of investing in fine wine? Because that sounds pretty unusual to me. Now let me tell you something. Firstly, if your investment does do poorly, you know, the good thing about it is that you can just drink the wine and consume it and enjoy it, you know, have a good time, get drunk, whatever. And the second thing is simply because since it's not as big as all of the other investment classes like stocks or property, there are unregulated markets. So this means you may come across a lot of more dodgy dealers a lot more scammers and whatnot because there's not many people doing it so not many people know about it and therefore it's easier to scam people like literally there'll be people selling wines at the wrong prices or people just simply sending you the wrong wines selling you fakes so in this industry just make sure you're only buying from established merchants again if you need any more professional advice again i'm not a professional advisor click the link below this is where i'm getting all my information from so you may be thinking poke you like you know which wine should i invest into like i don't know much about wines i don't even drink wine i don't even drink wine either but according to this website you should invest in bordeaux the top wines from bordeaux and then like a handful of wines from burgundy these are the safest type of wines to invest into as they performed well over the long term all right cool so if you didn't like that let me get into the next one the next one i think a lot of you guys are more interested in this one and you know a lot more about this one but that is investing in trainers and sneakers well, what if i was to tell you that you can look at sneakers and trainers as you know investments you know you put your money into a sneaker and even let's hold it for a while and sell it later for a huge profit now i'm pretty sure you guys are noticing that the street culture in you know europe china and north america is just increasing crazily over the past few years you know with the help of rappers entertaining just wearing them and advertising them people care a lot more about sneakers and they're willing to pay a big buck for it so you can make some profit off this now obviously not every sneaker will give you a return your money but with the rare drops are dropping you know every month or so it's hard to judge the resale of the sneakers if you need some help judging the resale of some sneakers check out stockettes that would be a good website for you to start off with. one could say you know there's a guessing game when it comes to predicting the resale value of sneakers as there's a lot of unpredictability but as we all know, it'll be easy to tell because you'll know which ones are more limited. You can tell how many they're going to release. Ah, cool. So let's go on some tips on how you can judge resale value. First things first, it's simply supply and demand, you know. Are they going to release a lot or are they going to release a little? If it's little, then that means it makes it more limited. Therefore, there'll be more hype and more demand for the shoe. An example was back in the day of Yeezy. So when Kanye West first partnered up with Adidas, you know, when Yeezys first came out, the Yeezy 350s, if you guys remember back in 2016, 2017, Resale prices were out of the roof, you know, people were selling 350s for like £800, £900, even over a grand because they're so rare. But then Kanye West then went on to go say that he wants these to be available for everyone. He just wanted it to be too limited. And he did say this in a news article, 
So then that's what they did. And they just started releasing a lot more Yeezys, a lot more frequently and a lot more. So this increased the supply, therefore making the demand of the shoe go lower. So there's less hype towards it. And now you can still resell them and make a profit, but it's not as much as it was back in the day. Now when it comes to the condition of shoe, this is a pretty obvious unworn, as in fresh brand new out of the box. If you do wear it, you can resell it, but it won't be the same as unworn, just because, you know, for obvious reasons sake, you know, it defeats the whole purpose of it. The only time that unworn actually beats worn shoes is if it was worn by like a famous athlete during a major game. So, so for example, Michael Jordan ran the edge of the ones in the finals of the playoffs. Those shoes would beat any brand new shoe just because it was worn by Michael Jordan himself. Do you know what I'm saying? Collaborations also help to determine the resale value of a shoe, you know, so if Nike and Off-White collab, you already know it's going to be a mazel. Another example is the Air Jordan and Dior collab. There was only around, you know, 11,000 shoes sold worldwide, or 8,500 shoes sold worldwide. Worldwide, by the way, not just in the UK. And the retail price for them were around 16.50. The resale value was around, you know, 11,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds. It was crazy. Now, like I said, these are unusual, lucrative investments. It's not like the stock market or real estate where you can track the price and you know look at a chart. It isn't like that. It's more of a guessing game. There's a lot of unpredictability. So if you guys are struggling to get into this game, I have a course on self elevation at UK, reselling to riches, which teaches you all of the basics and how to get started in reselling. So this goes through, you know, all the methods to get all the shoes, all the ways of judging resale value, all the ways of investing in shoes, all the ways of sourcing. So many things you can learn in this course. So I'm gonna give you guys a discount code. So only for you guys watching this video. It'll be 20 off, so you get 20 pounds off. It's normally 99 pounds, but if you use 20 off, it'll be 79 pounds. So go check it out, link below. Alright, cool. So let's move on to the next one. The next lucrative investment that you can make is simply into art. You know, so you know, paintings on the wall, collectibles, all sorts. Art. Now, for many generations, you know, the wealthiest people in the world have collected art. You know, you know, you'll notice that if you go to a wealthy person's house, you see, you know, art hanged up on the wall, lots of paintings, lots of famous paintings, lots of pictures and whatnot. Art tends to bring you know a little bit of enjoyment, it creates a social network with friends and family and collectors just to talk about the art and it can just create special bonds with other people. Now there is over 1.74 trillion dollars worth of art held by ultra high net worth individuals. Now the good thing about art as an investment class is that it's actually starting to gain some recognition by other investors due to the, you know, the given rate of return there's had over long periods of time and the lack of correlation with other investment classes. So this proves its diversification. As you can see, we have total art, contemporary art, and impressionist art. Now, contemporary art is simply post-war, so after World War II, recent times, this century, last century. Impressionist art is more of art with it, you know, with a paintbrush, you know, art back in the day. We're talking like 200, 300, 400 years ago. You know, them times when people even use their own blood just to make paintings, them type of times. That's impressionist art. Now, art can act as a store of wealth, as it has increasingly proven that it performs well well above inflation and compared to other asset classes it performs moderately well and we know there's evidence of long-term performance when people have been tracking the art transactions from auctions over a century ago ah uh, cool poku so what are the negatives of investing in art firstly i'm not even trying to be rude but it'll be hard for any of you lot to even get involved into it because you know so many arts can sell for over you know 300 million 200 million 50 000 pounds 80 000 pounds 5 million it's very, very expensive to get into. It's a big boys game. Let me not lie to you. Secondly, the volatility of art returns since 1985 has been pretty risky. Contemporary art can be seen as a little bit more riskier to invest into. The reason being is that results every year or the returns every year from contemporary art can differ and vary by 14 to 25 percent, as in it could be 14 percent lower or higher. Now, the worst year for art has been a 38 percent decrease. To put this in perspective, the 2008 financial crash was 39 percent. So as you can see. The volume of how bad it was is very very similar. Also, it's not as liquid as you think. It's not really like stocks and shares where you can sell it and get your money back in your bank account the next day. It's very very similar to real estate in terms of liquidity. As in, yes, it'll be right in front of you, but selling it will take a while. Firstly, you gotta find someone that actually likes the painting and feels like it's worth it. Secondly, art transactions can take so long. There's not really that many buyers for art, so looking for one can take a while. So if you're strapped for cash and you need to sell something, art would not be the best way to go for it. All in all, the only reason why you should invest into art is because of its diversification potential. According to this chart, it shows even low and even negative correlation with other asset classes like you know, high yield income bonds or hedge funds. Now to understand this chart, it goes from minus one to one. So essentially one meaning that the asset moves directly in correlation with this other asset. So if it goes up, goes up with it with the same percentage wise 
minus one basically means that it moves directly opposite to the asset so if it goes up this one goes down it goes in the opposite direction now as you can see with chart art has a low correlation with all of these other assets so this is good for diversification potential so so let's say there's a recession and you had a lot of stocks in your portfolio with your art it will help to you know ease out all of the losses that you made from your stocks because it doesn't really move the same with stocks if stocks go down and your art may not go down it may just keep going up all right but let's be real though the returns are slightly lower compared to others you know assets with annualized returns of 5.3 percent now like i said it's very, very expensive to get into art so i recommend you invest into like a total art index by masterworks.io again all of this information as well i got it from masterworks.io so again if you're very very interested link down below you already know Hey, but if you got to this point in the video, I appreciate it so much. Like it helps my channel so much. You don't even, you don't understand. Alright, so if you did get to this point in the video, I want you to comment which of these unusual lucrative investments that you want to get into. Is it gonna be sneakers, fine wine investing, luxury watch investing, or art? Me personally, in the future, the only thing I can see myself getting into is either probably I'd say probably you know luxury watch investing because you know I do want a Rolex. I need to update this this Apple Watch, this flimsy Apple Watch. But yeah, which one are you gonna get into? Comment down below. But yeah, man, I hope you enjoyed that, man. Spooky Banks, baby.